Hi, welcome to Parenting with Pets, preparing families with dogs for life with baby. My name is Beth Vincent. I am the founder of One Dog at a Time. And my goal and my mission is to help families create a safe home for their children and their pets. I am working with our companions Animal Rescue and we have partnered together to achieve that goal. So we have to get this slide out of the way. This presentation is for educational purposes only. It is not a substitution for supervision. And my hope is, is that we're able to give you some tools that will empower you to supervise, empower you with your how to speak dog skills. So we start with this slide talking about statistics. I wanted to throw that out there because I wanted everybody to start thinking about these numbers. 4.7 million dog attacks happen every year. Think about that, that's huge. And out of that number, 50% of the injured people are children, are kids. These could be your nieces, your nephews, these could be your own kids, your brothers, your sisters. And if you think about that, out of that number, 50% are bitten by the age of 12. That's a lifelong trauma that sometimes people hold, right? One of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this is in the time that I started my dog training journey, I've seen it as a reoccurring theme, dogs ending up in the shelter, losing their homes, children being traumatized, families being traumatized with the heartbreak of going through this. These are numbers that don't have to happen. 77% of these bites come from the family's dog, a friend's dog. These are dogs that we know and dogs that we love. These are not bad dogs, these are not aggressive dogs. They're not bad kids. It's miscommunication. And I'm hoping as you start to watch this presentation, that you start asking yourself some questions and come to a place of curiosity to see how this may affect you and your family and your dogs and how you can help support them. That is our goal, is to give you the tools to empower you to be able to supervise and understand. So a great place to start is with some skills, giving our dogs some skills. Some of you may have already been to a class. Maybe you haven't. Great starting point, right? You can start to learn how to speak dog because let's face it, our dogs are communicating to us all the time. We owe it to them to listen, right? Giving them some skills to help you navigate and as you go through this process, your dog has like their own little toolbox of skills and you feel empowered to help them through this journey. So this is a great place to start when we talk about how to speak dog. So the way that I usually like to start talking when I talk about body language with our dogs is asking the question, do you know what your dog looks like when they are happy, when they're relaxed, and when they're neutral. So I want everybody to stop and do this exercise right now. Just stop and think and get a picture in your head. What does your dog look like when maybe you're hanging out on the couch or maybe you're playing and their body is soft, loose, wiggly, their ears are in their neutral position? Does everybody have that image in their head? Great. Because the key of why I ask everybody to get that image in their head is when you have that image in your head, it is so much easier to pick up on when something changes, right? So if you look at that dog on the left, right? He looks happy, he looks relaxed. His mouth is open, it's soft, it's loose. His ears are in a natural, neutral position. Granted, these are snapshots a picture of a moment in time. So we don't see everything that's going around, 
but clearly you look at that picture and that's what you see. You're like, wow, that dog looks happy. Now, if you come over and look on the right, that dog doesn't give off that happy vibe. So if you look at his ears, his ears are kind of pressed back on his head. Yes, his mouth is open, but if you look, it looks more like tense and he looks like he has a direct stare going on. He definitely does not look as happy and relaxed. So I want to go through some pictures to have you guys start practicing. So the way that I like to have everybody practice these skills is come to a place of curiosity and asking questions, why might that be? And when we come from a place of curiosity and not frustration, we're able, again, we're able to help support more. So you look at this picture and your first reaction may be, oh my goodness, look at this, so cute, baby's hanging out with its dog. Oh, that's so sweet. So if you ask me what I see when I look at this picture, this picture scares me. Um, so the first, another mantra that I want to give you, and I really want everybody to start saying this in their head and having it be an automatic thing. Dog and baby on scene, parent in between, always. It's just the safe thing to do. So looking at this picture, this dog definitely does not look comfortable. He does not look relaxed. So if you look at his eyes, right, it's what we call whale eyes. So he's looking away, you can see the whites of his eye, but as he's looking away, he's also trying to keep his eye on that little human because he's like, oh, I don't really like this. His brow looks very tight, very tense. His ears are very pressed down. And another thing to think about, right? The baby is grabbing his lip. So anybody that's been around a baby knows that sometimes when they grab, they can grab pretty hard. They may be baby, but you know what? They have a pretty strong grip at times. So how hard is that baby grabbing his lip? Is it causing him any pain? Is it causing him any discomfort? So this is a great example. Dog and baby on scene, parent in between. And that is a great mantra to start practicing. So what does everybody see in this picture? Right, so there is an adult there that's holding the baby. The baby's sleeping, looks very peaceful. But now let's look at that dog for a minute. Does that dog look like a happy, relaxed dog to everybody? When I look at that dog, I don't see happy, I don't see neutral, I don't see relaxed. Again, I see that white in the eye where he's kind of, oh, I better keep an eye on that. I'm not sure what that is. And kind of looking away at the same time. He definitely looks worried. These are great exercises to do. Now, I really like this slide because I think this slide really shows both sides of that equation because, right, we talk about the dog a lot and the dog's comfort. But what about the baby's comfort level? If you look at this baby, she also doesn't look like she's enjoying that interaction. So thinking about it, if your dog and your baby had the choice of being in that chair, would they be there together? I'm thinking they wouldn't. That baby doesn't seem like, oh, what is that? And the dog, the same thing, he's kind of pulled back into himself. Again, you can see that white in his eyes. And it's our job as the guardians to protect our babies and to protect our dogs. So another mantra that I wanna start passing out to everybody to get everybody to start thinking about is that we can have inclusion, but we do not have to have close interaction. Remember what I said earlier about talking about relationships and the great relationships that we have in our life? They take time. Your dog is gonna be here for a while. Your baby, is going to be here for a while. Stop, breathe, relax. It does not have to happen in the next five minutes. Enjoy it. So here's another one, right? Sleeping baby, right? So if you look at our mantra, dog and baby on scene, parent in between. Yes, the dog's just laying there and doesn't, it seems harmless enough. 
but that dog doesn't seem fully comfortable. He doesn't seem fully relaxed, right? You can see the whites of his eyes. His ears appear to be pressed back. We don't know what else is going wrong, going on in the environment as this is just a snapshot in a moment in time. But looking at that dog, first reaction is that's not a happy, relaxed dog. And given the choice, I bet you that would not be his resting spot that he would have chose on his own. All right, so let's start talking a little about, right, because a common question that we hear a lot of times is, does my dog know that I'm pregnant? So we really can't say for certain, does the dog know that you're carrying a little human? What we can say is that our dogs are experts at picking up on some of the small, subtle changes that go on. And when you become pregnant and you go through that the stages of pregnancy, things are going to change, right? Smells are going to change. Your emotions are going to change. You may be really tired, so you may not be able to, your activity level with your dog may not be the same as it once was, right? All right. When dogs' reactions to being pregnant. So we've heard a lot of different things across the board. So we've heard some people say, gosh, I didn't notice anything. There's really nothing that changed. No noticeable anything with my dog. Everything seemed fine. Everything seemed the same. Other people have said that they've noticed a lot of changes in their dog. Maybe there was an increase in some of the attention-seeking behavior, right? Pawing, maybe barking, maybe whining. Protectiveness, right? So as we go through the stages of pregnancy, like I had mentioned in the slide earlier, maybe our, our gait is a little bit different. Maybe we're a little unsteady on our feet. Maybe we appear like we're more vulnerable and our dogs feel like they need to protect us a little bit more. Or maybe all those changes are just making our dogs a little scared or maybe they're making them a little nervous because they're still not really sure why all these changes are happening. And starting to ask the question, again, coming from that place of curiosity, and noticing those new behaviors. So the first stop that I always like to make when I notice a new behavior, and I like to pass this information on to everybody, if you notice something different in your dog that you've never noticed before, and it seems really new, is asking yourself, could it be medical? Could it be pain involved? So it's never gonna hurt just to make that call to the vet and have that conversation first. It's always good to rule out any medical problem. After that, right, your dog has been vet checked, they're healthy, and that's not a concern. Asking, when did these behaviors start? Is it the dog's behavior or is it something in our behavior? Maybe our routines change and our dog is just reacting to the changes that we're going through. Um, when did they happen, right? Did you maybe typically go for a morning walk and now you don't feel so well in the morning, so you're skipping your walk and you're noticing some different changes there. And asking questions, why, why do I think this might be happening? It's really good to, again, be curious and ask questions why this might be happening. It helps you to support your dog more. And now, I'm sure everybody's heard this when they've become pregnant is just bring the blanket home. That's all you need to do is bring the blanket home. And think about that for a minute. When would we ever do that in any other scenario or any other setup? Like think about kids, right? So they come home and they're like, hey mom, I wanna have my friends come over. Would you ever turn around and say, okay, honey, but make sure they send their shorts first. You couldn't do that, right? So that blanket is a one and done exposure. It's something that people do that makes us feel good as people. And by all means, if that's something that you wanna do, by all means, go ahead and do it. I just wanna take away for you that I don't want it to give you this false expectation, right? You bring home the blanket, your dog loves the blanket and everything went well. 
or vice versa. If there was a problem, I don't want you to think that, oh my gosh, there's going to be a problem when I bring my baby home. But even more importantly than that is think about when you bring that blanket and introduce it to your dog, the energy and the enthusiasm that you're putting into introducing that blanket to them. Oh my gosh, look at this blanket. And you're amping it up and you're putting all this energy and all this excitement into it. That is the last thing that we want to do, right? We want bringing the baby home to be a non-event. So we don't need to put all that excitement into it. So one of the other things that I want to get everybody to start thinking about and start questioning is how well do you really know your dog? And this is a great exercise for the whole family to get into. So if you're watching this with somebody else, answer these questions separately and then at the end compare your answers because sometimes our views are different right so if you ask me what how my dog reacted to these things on the list they might be different than the way my better half would answer these questions so we're going to go through this list um, with the next the slides coming up a little bit more in detail but i just kind of want to start with thinking about what visitors because right, when you come home with that baby, I'm certain you're gonna have a lot more activity at your house. Maybe grandparents, maybe aunts and uncles, maybe friends coming over that wanna congratulate you, that wanna help you. When you have visitors now, how does that look like for your dog? How do they react when people come into your home? What are they doing? What does their body language look like? Remember, that's where having the image in your head of that happy, relaxed, neutral dog is really important because it's gonna help you realize how your dog acts when things change. What about children? Have they ever been around children? Have they ever been around babies? What does that look like? How about other dogs when you're out, maybe you're on, other walk, you're out on a walk and they see another dog? What does that look like? What does your dog look like? How do they react? Right, so the upcoming slides, we're going to go over a few more of these a little bit more in detail. So I love this slide. So a couple of reasons why I love it, and I'm going to start with the reason why I love it first, is you have baby that's up in mom's lap, right, safe. Again, that's inclusion without close interaction. They're playing. The dog is having a fun time playing. And he's playing with what? A ball, right? So you're going to start to have, right? You're going to have a lot of different new novel items in your house with a baby. And as that baby grows, one being balls. So how does your dog react when they see balls? Do they like to chase them? Do they like to chew on them? What does it look like? So let me tell you this really quick story just to kind of get you thinking in that direction. So right nowadays, they have all these great outfits for kids. They're animal themed. So a child's dressed up in a snowsuit and the theme is a ladybug. So the outfit looks like a ladybug and she has this cute little hat on that has the antennas on it that have what at the end of them? Little pom-poms. Cute, right? Pom-poms look like what? They look like balls. So she's out running around playing in the snow. Mom is up on the porch with the dog. And all of a sudden the dog jumps up and takes off like a rocket into the snow towards the baby, towards the toddler. Mom yells, oh my God, the dog's after my, my baby. No, wait a minute. The dog is going to chase the balls. The balls happen to be on top of my child's head. Luckily, mom had practiced her skills and she used a recall, called her dog, the dog came back to her and she was able to evaluate that situation. That's one of the cool things, right? As we use management is as humans, we can look at situations and see how we can be more proactive. So now she knows, okay, next time that my child's out playing, I'm gonna give my dog something else to do. So my dog's gonna be happy and relaxed and my child's gonna play in the snow and be happy 
having fun. So this is where I want everybody to start kind of thinking outside the box a little bit is your dog may not be reacting to your child or your baby. They may be reacting to something in the environment that they're using or that they're playing with or some of the equipment that is going to start to get introduced into your life. I mean, here's a great one. Look at this. This is a bouncer and it vibrates, it makes noise, it has bells, it has whistles. It also, this one has some balls on it. So, right, we talked about our dog's sensitivities and what about noises? Like currently now, what does your dog do if the microwave bell goes off? What does that look like? How about thunderstorms, fireworks? Maybe you're walking and loud truck goes by. How does your dog react to sounds now? Because right, baby's gonna come home, you're gonna have new new items and new noises that are gonna get introduced. And I mean, just looking at the visuals on this, I mean, there's a lot going on in that equipment. And by knowing how your dog interacts with these, you're able, again, you're able to be proactive and help support your dog. And we can start helping our dogs get comfortable with some of these items prior to the baby's arrival. You know, sensitive ears, the baby comes home and right, we're gonna have babies cry. Sometimes babies squeal, sometimes they scream. That's gonna stress the parents out. It's also gonna stress your dog out. So knowing how they react prior is gonna help you set up a plan and be proactive to help support your dog with these changes that are going on. And another thing, right? So we talked about attention seeking behaviors and just us being human, sometimes we reward the exact behaviors that we don't want. And some of these attention seeking behaviors are really cute and we really like them and we encourage them. So right, behavior that is rewarded will be repeated. The question that I want you to ask yourself is right now, pre-baby, your dog's barking, jumping up on you because they wanna play or they wanna go outside and walk. That may be really cute right now, but how is that gonna work out for you when the baby's here, right? So maybe you've been up all night, you're tired, and you finally just got the baby to go to sleep. And your dog starts barking. Now you're gonna be frustrated and you're gonna be mad. So how about we work on a plan prior to baby to reduce some of these behaviors. Teaching our dogs that flight behavior is what's gonna get them some attention. Jumping, maybe we think it's cute when we're sitting on the couch and the dog jumps up and they wanna be petted or they wanna play. How is that gonna look if you're on the couch trying to feed your baby? You're not gonna want your dog jumping up on you while you're holding the baby. You're not, want, you're not, you're not gonna want them pawing at you because what if they hit the baby, right? Think about when your dogs go under your legs. I mean, that's dangerous without baby, but imagine if you're holding a baby. That could be super dangerous. So starting to build your skill set and do some coaching with your dog to help them and give them a toolbox of tools and skills that they can use. And here's some, here's some different ideas, right, that we could review and that we could refresh. So or feeding your baby. Where would you like your dog to go? How about we go to a place, right? Introducing a happy and safe place for our dog. Teaching that polite behavior, right? Or on the floor is a great polite behavior. So another great activity that I like to have everybody do is start running scenarios in your head and asking yourself, where will my dog be when I'm changing the baby's diaper? What would I like my dog to be doing? That's where training again would help, right? Because you could give them go to play. Maybe a stay. I'm feeding my baby. What would I like my dog to be doing? The list is really endless. I mean, think of a baby in a swing. 
what is my dog to be doing, right? So swing may make a lot of noise. And it looks right. That's unusual human behavior. Baby swing. And that could potentially be scary for our dogs. So giving our dogs an activity to do while your baby's in the swing. Maybe your baby's on the floor having some tummy time. That's a great time to introduce some management, right? Because we don't want, we wouldn't want your dog and the, your baby great clothes while the baby's crawling around. So again, and I can't, I can't say it enough, is you're never leaving your dog and baby alone, not even for a second. It really, it's, it's just not safe to do. And by practicing these prior, it's gonna give you the confidence that you need. So this is a really great activity to try out. Is it's called just right having a water bottle baby. So you could get a regular baby doll. But the nice thing about doing the water bottle baby is it gives you the weight, and it also gives you that um, I guess wobbliness movement. So you're going to take like eight to ten water bottles, and you're going to put them into a pillowcase. And that's going to be your water bottle baby that you're going to practice with. So as you're holding that water bottle baby, asking your dog to do different skills. And how do they do that now? And the nice thing about practicing it that way is you don't need to worry about having a baby and you can start playing these scenarios. So you're holding the water bottle baby while you're sitting. You can ask your dog to sit for downs, go to place. What if you're standing? you ask those same skills. Another great practice to do is taking that water bottle baby and handing it to another person. How does your dog react to that? And the cool thing again is when you know this now, you can start making a plan. You can be more proactive rather than being reactive. And what happens then is you're empowered. You feel confident. And when the baby arrives, you're going to be confident in your skills, you're going to be empowered with your skills, and you're not going to, it's going to take a little bit of stress off of you. Anytime we can take, reduce stress is a good thing, right? So here's another great activity, right? So you're bringing the baby into your life. Your dog's no longer going to be the baby anymore, right? So you want to start practicing beforehand, ignoring your dog while you're home. And I know that sounds really hard, right? But you want to do that because when the baby comes, you're going to be busy. You're going to be tired. So you may be feeding your baby, so you're not going to be able to pay attention to your dog. So you want to have your dog feel confident, and you want your dog to have that ability to be able to relax. That's where crates and gates come in handy, right? You're going to start practicing that exclusion from different activities. And your dog is going to look at it like a great activity because they're going to have great things happening then. And you're going to start off at a pace that's comfortable for them. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Right? So here's something that you want to think about. You're sitting down, maybe you're feeding the baby and somebody knocks on the door. And you have to go answer the door. Where's the dog? Where's the dog? What are you gonna do when somebody knocks on the door? Maybe you bring the baby with you. Maybe you put a dog in another room or maybe you put the dog in their crate securely. Because right, you're never leaving the dog and baby alone, not even for a second. Maybe the phone rings and we're distracted. We want to have a staff, a safe and happy place for our baby. We want to have a safe and happy place for our dog. Because let's face it, interruptions are going to happen. We're going to get distracted. However, if we practice this, it's going to, we're going to build up that muscle memory and somebody's going to knock on the door and you're not even going to think about it. You're going to be like, oh, okay, baby's coming with me. Or, oh, Dog's going in its crate, and then you're going to go answer the door, and then you're going to go answer the phone. Right? Management. What is it good for? Absolutely everything. Management is going to be key. You are going to love management. So I want.
want you to look at these pictures and there's a couple things that I want you to look at and see if you can pick out. Right, so the picture on the right, they're using baby gate. So there's a couple things about this that I really, really like. If you look at that baby gate, it looks like it's a mesh material. So that way you can't poke your fingers through it. So that's a nice safe thing. So you have an adult also in the background, if you can see, you can kind of see them standing up and you have a baby playing and you have a toddler playing. They have all their toys out. But here's another cool thing I want you to look at is if you look at that dog, the dog looks relaxed. He looks comfortable. And that's really important because proximity matters, right? So if we're using a management tool of a, of a baby game or a crate and our dog is stressed out, that's no good. We want our dog to be comfortable. We want our dogs to feel safe and we want them to be relaxed. We want our children, we want our babies to be comfortable. We want them to feel safe and we want them to be relaxed. The picture on the left, Right, you have a toddler and you have a baby again. They have all their toys out, they're playing. And if you look at the background, the dog's in the crate and he looks relaxed. He actually looks like he's sleeping. He's not stressed. That's what we want. So thinking about that. So if that dog was in the crate and he was barking or whining or pacing and showing stress signals, maybe that's not where the crate goes, right? Proximity matters. So maybe we put that crate in another room. Maybe we put it out of that main activity activity area to help our dogs feel more comfortable because we want it to be good experience. We want them to have positive association with being in their management area, which I also we also call success stations. And the cool thing about the success stations is they have no other options but so I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time talking about the resource guarding dangers, but I definitely want to touch base on it because I want everybody to think about it and I want you to imagine your dog now that you're currently sharing your life with. And if you notice anything that concerns you, I want you to please reach out and ask and we will get you more information that will help. If you look at the bottom of the slide, our companions has a helpline. And the phone number is listed there. And our companions help on is a resource for the community. Help. So resource guarding. What is it and what does it look like? So resource guarding can be a really dangerous behavior. We can't cure it, but we can manage it. That being said, resource guarding to a degree is kind of a normal behavior. We resource guard as people. Look at all of the alarms that we have set up on our on our houses, on our cars, on our phones, and everything, right? We're protecting stuff that's we're protecting our resources, right? So our dogs do the same thing. And one of the keys with our dogs protecting resources is they are protecting what they perceive as high value to them. So it's always from the dog's point of view. Right, so it could be a lot of the common items that people tend to think about are toys, maybe food, maybe a resting spot. But it's important to know that it's from the dog's point of view. So it could be a dust bunny under your bed. So what does it look like if your dog is guarding an item? Right, so maybe they're standing over it really tense with a direct stare. Maybe it's a low growl. Maybe they start to eat really, really fast. I just want you to be aware of some of those behaviors. And if you have any concerns, again, please reach out because we can help you navigate through that and help keep you and help keep your children safe. And asking the question, are all my dogs need met? Right, because that's gonna help our dogs all need exercise, our puppies, all the way up to our seniors. And that's going to give them an outlet, right? They also need sleep, right? Think about it. When I don't get enough sleep, I get a little cranky. Same thing can happen with our dogs, right? So we want to make sure that we're giving them the opportunity to still be able to sleep. Are they getting enough sleep? Are they getting undisturbed sleep? That's another really key thing. When our dogs are sleeping, it needs to be 
I'm disturbed. That means they're in a safe spot and everybody respects that spot. Exercise enrichment. You want to make sure that they're still getting that. And enrichment comes in so many forms nowadays. And we can get into that a little bit more later on. But I, I definitely want everybody to start thinking about it. Now you're getting ready to bring your, your new baby home. And you might be asking yourself, why we have a pizza on the screen? So I want you to think about, and in no way am I comparing your new baby to a pizza, but I want you to go through in your mind and think about what does it look like when you come home now, if you come home with a pizza or if you come home with any kind of takeout. I bet you it looks like this. You walk in the door, you have your pizza, and you walk over to your kitchen, you probably get a couple plates, and you sit down and eat, and that's it. And it's kind of like a non-event. That's what we need it to look like when you bring your baby home. Because, right, you don't come home with that pizza saying, oh my gosh, look at the baby, we got a pizza, pizza time, woo! Because you don't want to put all that energy and exuberance into that pizza. You want your dog just to relax because you want to come home and have your takeout. Maybe it's been a long day and you want to sit down and chill and dish eat. So basically, bringing home the baby this is an event that is for the humans, for the parents. It is not for the dog. It is not about the dog. And you want to make that a low-key event for your dog. That being said, let's make a plan for that special day. And thinking ahead of time, what is that going to look like? Asking questions. Where is my dog going to be? Maybe you can extend that sleepover, right? Because you're going to be tired when you come home from the hospital. So having a plan prior to that, again, is going to help you relieve some stress. Maybe they're at your, maybe they're with grandparents. Maybe they're with aunts or uncles, or maybe you have a friend that can watch your dog. Maybe it's a boarding facility. And asking the question, hey, can they stay there? Two days after you come home to just give you a chance to come home, breathe for a minute, decompress, and enjoy those first few days with your new baby. And now I'm talking about the best friends again. I, I know I mentioned it before, but it's, it's really super important thinking about the relationships that you have in your life. They take time. It takes communication from both sides, right? So let's start understanding what it is that our dogs are saying. And you can have that inclusion without any close interaction, right? So what is that, what is, when we say inclusion without direct interaction, what does that look like, right? So maybe you're feeding your baby and you do, a little game of kibble fetch with some polite manners, right? That's where those tools came in handy of training is now you can ask your dog for a polite sniff, you're holding your baby and you're doing some kibble fetches. Um, yummy treats are involved. So it looks like, right, you have your baby and then there's that association of yummy treats, play, right? You're playing, playing fetch and good things are happening. So when the baby, the dog are together, good things are happening, but there's a parent in between and they're not having direct interaction. So that's really super important. One of my favorites is let's dance, right? Who doesn't like to dance? I used to love doing this with my grandson when he was little. I know if you ask my family, they would say it's not quite dancing what I was doing, but he loved it and I had a lot of fun, right? So you have some music on. Music is nice, it's calming, it's relaxing. You're having fun, you're moving about, and even while you're doing the dancing, you can even add in some of that kibble fetch game while you're doing that, right? Again, another fun way to include your dog and your baby while you're staying safe and while you're having fun. Because, right, let's face it, we need to have fun and we need to try to do things that are going to help reduce our stress level. Um, Petting and massaging, that might be an activity you do 
once the baby's taking a nap, right? Providing that your dog likes it, right? So some dogs might not like to get massaged, just like some people don't like to be. But if your dog enjoys it, that's a great time to just have some puppy and parent time. Now here is an activity, another activity that I really like and <clears throat> won't spend a huge amount of time on it, but I want everybody to be aware of it, right? Life is stressful. Life is even more stressful now. And then now you're going through a pregnancy and you're bringing a baby home just on your plate. So prior towards your sanity, what does that mean? Basically what it means is self-care. You need to take care of yourself because when you take care of yourself, you can be the best that you can be. You can be the best parents, the best friends, the best partner. And a great activity to try to do that is you want to get a sanity buddy. Talk about this beforehand and knowing that your sanity buddy, if they come up and say, hey, pick a card, that means they have the full understanding that they're taking care of everything so you can go relax and decompress, whatever that looks like for you. So if you look on the screen, these are just index cards, they're different colors, and you're going to assign a certain amount of time to each index card, right? So your sanity buddy comes up and says, hey, you look a little stressed, let me take care of everything. You're going to pick a card, and what is the best activity on this list? I know for me, it would be taking a walk with my dog. So this is a great time to reconnect with your dog, get out in nature, and just breathe for a minute. Because when we do self-care, again, it helps us be the best that we can be. And not forgetting to include, you know, a date night as well. So maybe you have a family member or a friend who can watch your baby so you guys can get out, even if it's in the same home and it's just watching a movie, just having somebody else take responsibility so you can just breathe for a minute and enjoy each other. And do you need help? guess what? Sometimes we all need a little bit of help. And I really find that people offer to help. They really want to help. Take them up on that. It's going to help you again. It's going to help you breathe for a little bit. You know, maybe maybe friends or family, they can stuff some Kongs for you or get some puzzles ready for you. That way, if you need it and you're doing an activity with your dog and you need to give your dog an alternate thing to do, you could just go to the refrigerator or the freezer and grab something. Maybe a dog walker, you know, maybe that's a friend, maybe that's a family member, or maybe it's a professional. Looking into different daycares, that's a great option as well. If you have a dog, social dog, maybe a daycare a couple times a week gives you the opportunity to take a little something off of your plate. Your dog comes home, they're tired. And you had a chance to relax and enjoy your baby and get some stuff done. You know, maybe you need help getting your skills up to, you know, improving some of your skills. Reach out to a trainer and help get your skills up to speed. So I know that was a lot of information that we went over. So what are the next steps in this? is reach out, right? Set up an introductory private session with me and let me help you, give you the tools to safely navigate through your new journey. I wanna be able to empower you to have you feel comfortable with this. And it is going to be a great journey. So reach out. Again, below is listed the Our Companions Helpline number. It also has their website if you want to check that out. And again, I can't thank you all enough for taking the time to watch this webinar because there's a lot of information out there for parents welcoming, welcoming a baby into their life. You know, they have information for grandparents, they have information for parents. What do our dogs have? Our dogs just have us. So this shows that you're taking the first step in becoming dog aware parent, which here's the bonus. That means you're gonna be raising dog aware children and that is where the dog aware generation comes into play. Awesome. Thank you everybody. And I look forward to meeting with you.
Have a great afternoon.